DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me, and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful, and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is voice. All right, duck. Groucho, we invited some women lawyers to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Beverly Rubens. Her partner is one of baseball's best-known figures, Mr. Charles Dressen. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. You? Chet Dressen, of all people, huh? Well, welcome, folks, with the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Beverly Hills, uh, Rubens, huh? And uh, Charlie Dressen, well. Glad to meet you again, Chuck. Nice I haven't see seen you, you for a long time, huh? Last time I saw you, you were in the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Washington this year, I understand. Is that true? Uh, that's right, Gotcha. I'm going to manage the senators. Oh, well, you're going to have your hands full. Some of those senators in Washington are pretty hard to manage. <laughs> How do you think the Washington Ball Club will fare this year? I think we'll finish in first division. In other words, if you're lucky, you'll come in fourth. Is that it? Well, I don't know. If you're lucky, you might go a little bit higher. But the other day, I see where Casey put me seven. Casey Stingle. Oh. Well, Wash, you know Washington, first in war, first in peace, and fourth in the American League. <laughs> Used to be last in the old days. Let's right. change that joke. Now, how long were you with Brooklyn before they threw you out, Chuck? <laughs> well, I think we might as well get right down to cases here. <laughs> Stop being polite, huh? First, they didn't throw me out. I was there in 1951, 1952, and 1953. Yeah. What kind of a deal have you got with Washington now? Well, I got what I wanted with Warston. I got a two-year contract with the senators. Chuck, they slip one over on you. All the other senators get six years in Washington. <laughs> now, Chuck, do you mind if I palaver with your partner for a moment? Not at all. Go ahead. You're Beverly Rubens, That's huh? right, Groucho. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says here you're a, a lawyer? Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, I may invite you to go out and help me work on a case after the show. <laughs> you prefer scotch or bourbon? <laughs> Would you mind giving us your age, Beverly? And remember, the penalties for perjury are the same in this court as any other. Well, if I have a choice, Groucho, maybe I better not incriminate myself. Well, uh, are you single or married? In other words, are you looking or cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I get fooled all the time. Well, I'm not cooking. Now, Beverly, how long have you been a lawyer? Well, Groucho, I passed the bar just this last December. I've heard the expression passing the bar many times, but I'm not just I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> what happened when you passed the bar? Did some drunks inside whistle at you? Yeah, the bar that I was referring to is the state bar, Gotcha. That's oh. considered the best kind. Oh, I see. They have nothing but bonded stuff there. <laughs> and after what it is, it's a written examination. Mm -hmm. And after I'd received notification that I had uh, passed the written examination. I attended the uh, ceremonies in January, where I was sworn in by Chief Justice Gibson of the uh, California State Supreme Court with 250 other attorneys here from Southern California. You say he swore you in? That's yes. a coincidence. Last time I faced him, he just cussed me out. <laughs> was there any more to the ceremony than just this man swearing at you? <laughs> well, yes, we had a... Uh, you do a maypole dance or anything like that? <laughs> Singing habeas corpus for yeah. you know. <laughs> now, uh, we, uh... All around the habeas corpus. Huh? <laughs> You've been there, I see. Well, I was, uh, I've been a habeas corpus for many years. <laughs> well, after we were... Uh... Last two years, I've just been a plain corpus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after we were sworn in by uh, the Chief Justice, we did have a talk from the representative of the uh, state bar, and uh, he gave us some tips on professional ethics and uh, honesty in the courtroom. Well, was he for him or against him? 
<laughs> well, I'd like to uh, more time to talk to you two, but now you're going to play your bet your life. Remember, we start you off with $100. You understand how to play this game, huh? And one answer between you. Okay. How was it you didn't take the sport quiz? Was it gone already? You know enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You were with Brooklyn. Now, you selected me. <laughs> You select a dictionary quiz, huh? It's a fine thing for a ball player. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 80. 80. 80. 80. All right. What does the word ambulate mean? To walk about, move about. Yeah, that's right. That's very good and very smart. You're on your way. You have $180 now. What are you going to go for? Seventy dollars. Uh, what do you call the movable plate or valve in a stove or fireplace that is used to regulate the draft? The movable plate or valve in a stove or fireplace that is used to regulate the draft. The flu? No, it's a damper or a check. We lost half your 180, you now have 90 dollars. All right, now don't get discouraged. Now what are you going to go for? Sixty? Sixty? What is the fourth estate? The press. The press is right. Well, you now have $150. Okay, now you're climbing. Now, what are you going to go for? Ninety? Ninety? What do you call the board used by an artist on which he mixes his colors or pigments? No, the easel. The board used by an artist in which he mixes his colors or pigments. Thing like this. The, the easel? The palette. I'm sorry. Now what is the it? The palette. Yeah, Eugene Palette, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you wind up with $240. Chuck, you got home by a squeeze play last time. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> My darling, years ago I promised that if you married me, I'd give you the moon and the stars. But I found the moon is a little out of my reach. Look out the window, darling. It's yours. The most beautiful car on the road. A new DeSoto. I know you've admired it many times, and you have wonderful taste. I know you like that new color sweep, as they call it, and the low, sleek look, and the big, wide, wonderful windshield. It's a beautiful car, not huge and overpowering, but fine and eager and smart. It suits you. And wait till you drive it, darling. It drives like a dream. It's so simple, so easy to handle. And what a wonderful response. That DeSoto takes off like a bird. Now you own a car you'll be proud to drive anywhere. Darling, here's one of the stars I promised you. Your new DeSoto. Every woman would love to have a new DeSoto. The smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Groucho, we have a man who works for the county for you tonight. He's Mr. Lester Henthorn. His partner is Mrs. Janet Wong. Folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome uh, for, uh, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Janet Wang, eh? I, pre I presume that's you? That's my name. Oh. See, <laughs> I'm so smart, huh? Is that how you pronounce it, uh, Wang? Well, the Chinese call me Wang. Wang, well... And the Koreans call me Huang, I and the Americans see. call me Huang, but I, my name is Huang. Wang, well... I may be Wang, but I think you're wonderful. <laughs> Are you a Chinese-American, Janet? Oh, no, I'm Korean very much. Oh, is that so? Uh, where in Korea? North, South? Uh... Oh, South Korea. South Korea. Huh? There is a North Korea. Huh? Yeah, okay. Let's hope someday it'll all be one Korea That's again. That's right. Huh? Now, where were you born in uh, Korea? Well, I was born in Seoul, Korea, but the Americans call it Seoul. Seoul. But uh, I came to America when three months old. Let's see, you're uh, Lester Henthorne? Lester Henthorne, Groucho. I have a rather peculiar name. Well, just I don't think so. Almost everybody is named Henthorne, huh? <laughs> well, just put a hen and a thorn together and you got it. That's true. 
And if you put a hen and a thorn together, you're going to have a pretty sick hen. <laughs> now, where are you from, hen? I'm a originally Groucho from Ohio, a little place in Ohio called Hannibal. Hannibal? Right along the Ohio River. Oh. What sort of work do you do? Well, I'm with the county agriculture department, pest control, Groucho. You're a what? Pest control man for the Los Angeles, Los Angeles County Agricultural Department. You control pests? That's right, Groucho. What sort of pests do you control? Well, you mean like door-to-door -door salesmen? <laughs> no, Groucho, we control field rodents. The principal one is the uh, beachy eye ground squirrel. <laughs> what is the difference between a ground squirrel and a tree squirrel? Well, the tree squirrel, he lives principally in the trees, and the ground squirrel, he digs burrows and lives in the ground. <laughs> well, I, I've, so I've learned something there. I don't know what it is, but I've learned something. Now, there must be more difference than that, isn't it? Well, no. That's One, the only difference? That's the only difference. Well, how about gophers? Do you trap them? Well, we do some work on gophers, Groucho, on our freeways. And... Oh, there are plenty of them on the freeways. <laughs> plenty of rabbits on the freeways. <laughs> well, Mrs. Wong, let's get back to you. When was the last time you were in Korea, Janet? Uh, it was November 1949 to 1950. Oh, you were there during the war, huh? Oh, and how. <laughs> And how? That's a, is that a friend of yours? Or? Yes, my husband and I were invaded by the communists, were imprisoned for three months, and what an experience we've had. Oh, that must have been just awful, huh? They woke us up at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, and they said, I'm gonna, we're going to kill you. They had us standing against the wall with our hands uplifted and guns pointing on our chest, and I said, well, I guess this is it. I'm going to die. I was counting, and... I don't know why, but God sent his angels, I guess, and saved our lives. Mm. First Division Marines liberated us, and that was really wonderful. Oh, that must have been a great deal. Those Greatest Marines, experience. Those Marines are pretty handy. To oh, have I think now. they're the best of the United States of America. Now, what are your plans for the future, Janet? Are you planning to go back to Korea? Oh, we have to. Our work is in Korea. We take care of... Over 165 abandoned babies and boys from teenage boys of Korea. Well, could you tell us something about your boys' farm? What is it like? Is it anything like a girl's farm? Oh, no. It's the 40-acre land farm, and on it we have a little rabbits and chicken and ducks and a little cow. We have to feed, get some milk for the babies, too. Uh -huh. We have to get eggs for the babies. And we have pig. We started with one pig. We got 21 pigs. And chicken, five pullets. We started uh, 800 laying chickens. So we have eggs to feed our babies twice a week. And I think that's wonderful. Yes, it is. And we have over 300 mouths to feed, and we must go. And, and that's our job, my husband and I. Well, you and your husband are engaged in just about the most important work I can think of. Well, this is one thing I want to remind you, Mr. Groucho. We are doing something for our boys. We are changing their lives. We are educating them, training them, and a little bit of democracy. We're giving the American names, Bobby, Tommy, and Henry, giving them bread, and everybody comes and visits us. They say, why, this is little America. Well, uh, you're right. <laughs> you're quite a gal, and I hope you knock us over for a lot of money tonight. All right, now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $240, and the secret word is voice. You selected a biblical quiz. What do you want to start with? What do you think? 60. From 10 to 100. 60. $60. $60. Who did the daughter of the pharaoh find in a basket floating among the bulrushes? Moses. Old man Moses is right, huh? <laughs> Off to a good start, you have one hundred sixty dollars. Now, what are you going to go for? What do you want to cry? <laughs> hundred. To do what? Okay. All right. Hundred. What biblical leader brought the Israelites over Jordan into Canaan? Canaan. Joshua. Yes, and not only that, he fit the Battle of Jericho. Well, <laughs> you now I have two hundred sixty dollars. Let's have a look for it. All right. $80. Eighty. $80. Who was David's close friend in the Bible? Jonathan. Jonathan is right. 
You now have $340. $340 is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? 70. 70? 70? What country was referred to in the Bible as the land of bondage? Israel. Uh, Talk it over. Egypt. Egypt. That's right. Egypt me out of $70 there. And you wind up with $410. Oh, Joshua, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Roger, uh, Miss Kay Barker and Mr. Robert Bootson are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Roger Marks. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss Kay Barker and Robert Bootson, eh? Miss uh, Barker, this is the first time in my life I've ever stopped talking to a platinum blonde in order to talk to a man with whiskers. <laughs> Mr. Bootson, huh? Where are you from, Mr. Bootson? Well, uh, I'm Boots, and I'm from, uh, I'm a native of San Francisco, even though some people think I'm a native from Africa. Yeah. No, I thought you came from the bush country. <laughs> How old are you, Boots? Well, boots, ar boots. around... Logging up and down again. Boots. Around 35, of course, I've been living 20 years in the hills and the mountains and the beaches, and they never caught up with me to send me my birth certificate, so I don't know how old I really am. Oh. You say you lived in the hills? That's How long? Right. Well, I lived there about uh, 20 years in caves and under trees and top of trees. Why were you living this, uh, like a hermit? Well, uh, uh, of course, I didn't have to pay any taxes living that way, and, uh, and uh, I, I felt very healthy up there. I mean, I uh, had a lot of air. I like a lot of air. Yes, you can get a lot of air there. <laughs> You mean one day the tax man came around and you, says, you threw the paper aside and says, well, me for the hill? That's right. Well, what did you eat when you were living like a caveman? Well, wild... Frozen chop suey? No, I ate uh, uh, wild berries and acorns and I'd climb high fig trees and eat sweet figs. I chased the birds away because they eat the sweetest. Yeah. And I ate sweet figs and grass. It's good for your eyes. Alfalfa. Cows got good eyes. I want good eyes. That's right. You rarely see a car with glasses. <laughs> And, uh, Boots, it's it, very difficult for me to pull myself away from you and talk to Miss Barker, attractive as she is, but, uh, your first name uh, is Kay? That's right, Gosho. Is that so? Yes. Where, where, where are you from, uh, Kay? Well, I'm from Blackpool, England. Oh, from Jolly Old England, eh? Yes. Oh. That's a seaside resort, you know. Are you married? No, I'm not, Gosho. You're not, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have a job? Yes, I do. Well, what do you do? Well, I'm a butcherette. A butcherette? Mm-hmm. What is a butcherette? Well, a butcherette means You put the uh, panties on lamb chops? No. Well, first of all, to be a butcherette, you have to belong to the Meat Cutters and Butcher Workers Union. Oh. I'm a cashier, and I'm also on the deli. You're a deli, do you say? No, I'm on the deli. Are you a deli. Piccadilly or a deli? No, I'm not a Piccadilly. No, I'm on the deli. You're on the deli? <laughs> when I'm well, not Well, how long have you been on the deli? I mean, well, you look pretty good to me. Uh. Four years now. Well, what is a deli? Delicatessen counter. <laughs> I thought you were hitting the old stuff or something. I don't know. How about you, Boots? You married? Yes, my wife's hiding somewhere out there. She's probably swinging from a chandelier. Or something. Where did you meet your wife? In a treetop or? A... Well, I met my wife out in San Francisco Beach, and I was beachcombing, and. She was practicing her ballet, so I always dreamed of being in the Jinsky, so I went into my dance, and she got intrigued, so she decided to share the tree with me, so we decided to get married. We've been happy ever since. You mean you split a tree together? <laughs> well, when you got married, Boots, did your wife go along with this beachcombing life? Well, I mean, did she enjoy alfalfa and peanuts and that sort of thing? Well, she did for three months, but then afterwards the mosquitoes got her, and they got... Peanuts, she got tired of peanuts and tired of climbing fig trees for her breakfast. So she said, I compromised and we, we got a half of a house. I mean, we got a little house, uh -huh. a little cottage, a room. <laughs> but do you have a job now? Yes, I'm a, uh, I'm a singing fruit peddler. 
I paddle figs and peanuts in the beaches in the desert, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, and I sing and peddle fruit. What kind of fruit? Well, I peddle figs and peanuts and razor blades. I mean, apples. And... <laughs> what kind of a fruit is a razor blade? Huh? <laughs> well, show us how you sell your fruits and nuts, Boots. Right now? Not a very long sales talk. Just about one more second. One second will be enough. Hear ye, hear ye. Tree ripe and sweet figs, ladies and gentlemen. The birds eat them. I eat them. And I went a long way in life. <laughs> if you uh, if you think the stuff he's selling is nuts, just listen to him. <laughs> I'll hope both I admire you. Uh, thank you. I want you to know that I admire a rugged individual as like God you. God bless you. Thank you. All right, now let's play you bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, Mrs. Wong and her partner are leading with $410. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You'll get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. Okay, now what are you going to start with? 70. Does his beard tickle? Uh... <laughs> Seventy dollars. All right, spell the word motif, meaning the theme or dominant feature. Motif. Spell it and pronounce it. M O T I F F E. You spell it. M-O-T-I-F-E. Motif. No, I think about six more spellings will get it, but... No, it's M-O-T-I-F. That's what I thought. I forget. You just... You just got too elaborate with that word. All right, then don't get discouraged. No, what are you going to go uh, for? you lost half your hundred dollars. You now have fifty dollars. Now what are you going to go for? She says eighty, and I say eighty. <laughs> okay, spell the word gnome, meaning a... Diminutive, uh, diminutive being like a dwarf or an elf. No. Yeah. It's K. No, no. N-U-M-B? No. 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 N-O-M-B. N-Y-M-P-H. Chance. <laughs> Here's the well, I'm sorry. You had a number of chances. This, uh... I believe you lived in a tree, Boots. It's G N O M E. Oh, yeah. No. Well, you um, lost half your fifty dollars. You now have twenty-five dollars. Don't get discouraged. You're going to leave here flat broke. <laughs> No taxes, that's right. <laughs> the little ones are easy. The big ones are hard. The little ones? The little if you ones? get near one, I'm going to give it to you. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars? Okay. Spell the word committee, meaning a person or persons appointed to act upon some matter. Committee. C-O-M-M-I-T-T-E-E. -T -E. Right! Committee! <laughs> Climbing again, you now have $75. All right, now you've got $75. Last chance to beat the other couple. Shoot the works. I said shoot the works. Shoot the works. Shoot the works. Shoot All the right, works. don't blame me. All right, spell the word intelligible, meaning understandable. I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-A-B-L-E. Please no. let me do it. Go ahead, dear. I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-A-B-L-E. G-I-B-L-E. That is right. Oh! And you wind up with $175. Oh. Well, thanks and good luck, Minnesota Plymouth. Thank you. I got to buy That was very good, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that means that 
Mrs. Wong and Mr. Henthorne with $410. In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. TV, top value. TV, top value. For a real buy in a used car, see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Let's take a look at some of these great DeSoto used cars in action. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer specializes in cars that were better engineered and better built. That's why they're better used cars. This 1952 DeSoto, for instance. The extra value that was originally built into it is still there. Remember how we described the 1952 DeSoto as a beautiful car and built for comfort? Those famous Auroflow shock absorbers smoothed out the bumpiest roads. They still do. And waterproof ignition helps you start your DeSoto on the rainiest days and keeps it operating in the dampest of weather. So great has been the demand for new 1955 DeSotos and Plymouths. Terrific trade-ins like this are now a top value buy. Now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. He's having a special anniversary sale celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Here's the winning couple, Groucho, Mrs. Wong, and Mr. Hemthorne, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Although our national parks are understaffed and need more money to operate efficiently, more people visited them last year than ever before in history. For $1,500, which is the largest and oldest of our great national parks? Talk it over. What is the answer you two decided upon? Yellowstone? That is right, Yellowstone. <laughs> That's right, you win $1,500, and how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $410 in the quiz. That's $1,910. I know what you're going to do with your money. Oh, I know. But what are you going to do with yours, you pest well. man, you? Huh? <laughs> I'm going to send some money to my favorite uh, religious radio program, or uh, television program, and there's a family of, we know of this. You mean there is one more religious than this one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Gatsu, so could be. Send me 90% of it. No. And I'll send it to Korea. Then all right. Well, I know a family of 12 living children. You do? And uh, Those are the best kind. Huh? The father don't make much money, and I'm going to help them. <laughs> well, congratulations from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. You bet your life. Friends? Go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell him Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. <laughs> This is George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. See that children play only in approved play areas, never in the street or near moving traffic.